Bang, Needs Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is not joining us for this review. I already did a review on this, and it wound up being entirely way too long, so I'm going to try to redo this. This video is going to be on the Harukas Blomerus South African Knife. He is a South African knife maker. If you look him up, you will find a site with many, many, many amazing custom knives they're all very unique a lot of them do have the same footprint as this knife and then a lot of them are very different so um but the ones that have this same footprint you know you could just rearrange in a different order so even though you're not going to be able to probably find this one ever again you can find many that are, are similar in the footprint just with different materials um Let's get into the good and bad of this knife. But first up, I want to mention these hanks. These are handmade hanks by Brandy Lejeure. The stitch work is absolutely incredible. These things are well made, very well made hanks. And if you want to get yourself some hanks that are just incredibly well made, that are all hand done, go check her out on Instagram. The stitch work is amazing. And it's just the overall quality is very nice great materials okay so now this knife is around seven and three quarters inch long with a three and three eighths inch blade it really is very comparable to the benchmade 940-1 but it's a little bit bigger than the benchmade bug out there's your size comparison <laughs> Now, the blade steel on this is made of M390, and the bolster is Damasteel, and the carbon fiber is called Chatoyant, Chatoyant, if I'm pronouncing that right, Chatoyant carbon fiber. I'm guessing he made it up. And if you're wondering what Damasteel is, or what the difference between Damasteel and Damascus is, Damasteel is a powdered version of Damascus so that it winds up being instead of different steels bonded together it's in powder so it makes one solid block of steel so that's the difference you're not going to have the separation like you have on Damascus so it is a better version also this is M390 if you don't know about M390 M390 is considered a super steel that has great edge retention and it's very stain resistant and also a very strong steel it is a great steel if you want to know more about that you can look it up um, this is a custom knife so it is going to have a better heat treat and also I want to say our buddy Shaker MT is the one who sent this to us and we love the guy. He's an amazing guy. He's really helped us out by sending us such amazing knives and even gifting us one. I mean, he's just such a great dude. But he uses his knives, and I think that's awesome. I'm not holding it against anybody. If anybody just gets knives just to flick and just be jewelry, just to buy and sell and trade. But he uses them, so when he sent it to me, he said, use it. Carry it. He even said I could sharpen it. That's amazing. So let alone, most people would say absolutely not. There's no way I'm going to carry this thing, let alone use it, let alone sharpen the knife. But me, I was up for the challenge, and I absolutely carried it. I absolutely used it, and I absolutely sharpened it, which is so awesome to me because I got the, I got the chance to feel how good the steel is. I got a chance to feel how well it performs to be able to bring you a real review on this knife. So let's get to this good and bad. Okay, so now the good, this thing is a beautifully drop point with a little bit of recurve, a very little bit of recurve blade that is hand satined. You can tell it's hand satined because of how the pattern goes back and forth. So it's all done by hand and then the flats are polished. It's very thin behind the edge, around 16 thousandths behind the edge I measured. And it, uh, when I first got to it, the blade, it has, it had like a, I'm not going to say micro bevel or anything like that. It had an edge on it, but um, I laid it back just a tiny, tiny fraction of amount. I was going to just follow the same 
angle that they used but i just wanted to bring it back just a little bit more to give it a little bit better performance because this is a beautiful hollow ground blade and it does go from thinner to a little bit thicker then back down to thinner so that um so saying it's 16 thousandths it does change from place to place but um at the skinniest part you know that i find it was around 16 thousandths the tip is very fine very great for penetrating now when i say i used it i did use it very lightly i didn't cut anything that would scratch this knife i didn't carry it in a ridiculous way i carried it got to feel how it was in my pocket and i used it very lightly but what really told me a lot about the knife was sharpening it i really got to see what a great heat treat is and also the grinds on this blade are done very very well let me get into both of those so the grind from side to side is very symmetrical. Everything lines up very nicely. You can tell the attention to detail is just extraordinary. That you can tell that he took his time with this blade and made sure everything lined up very nicely. That way when I'm sharpening it, it's a joy to sharpen because I don't have to worry about constantly changing my angles from one side to the other so that it would match because the grinds don't match they gr the grinds match very nicely and to do that by hand remember a robot didn't do it a human did it so that says a lot that means a lot of work went into this thing and also the heat treat the difference between a good heat treat and a great heat treat is it's it's to me, it's a lot, and I've really learned that sharpening knives because a good heat treat, I mean, you're lucky if you get a good heat treat. I'm not going to say lucky. You should get a good heat treat, but the difference between a good and a great, it, it, there's, oh, it really, really, putting the, the blade to the stone, I could really feel how effortlessly it sharpened, how nicely it sharpened, how nicely it deburred, and it made it a joy to sharpen. Now, a good heat treat, you know, is easy to sharpen too, but it, there's just, there's differences and you can really feel the difference. Just like even in the performance of the steel when you're using it, how long is it going to cut? How um, easily is it going to chip? How strong is the steel going to be? And all that is from the heat treat. Now, let me get close to this knife so I can really show you how nice this thing's put together. It's put together so nicely. There's no, like, the difference between this and the, the carbon fiber from the damage steel to the carbon fiber, you can't even feel the transition. I feel the screw a little bit, but that's it. It's so smooth from one side to the other. And this carbon fiber, if you're wondering what it feels like, it feels like glass. It's so slick and so hard. And then look at that. It's like, it's almost like it's in 3D. I do not know how he makes it, but it is cool looking, man. It almost looks like you can jump through those hoops. It's like they're actually on top. I don't, it's weird. It's such a cool looking material. Sorry for, there we go. And then the back is so smooth. Everything is so soft and so lined up perfectly. You can see there is some lines or grind marks on the clip it does have a ceramic ball in there which is really cool the damas steel nice and smooth you know it's damas steel so you don't really feel too much difference um and the action oh the action this is the most unique i'm gonna say the best action i've felt on a flipper ever it's like the relationship between the jim, because, okay, there's jimping on the flipper tab that is sharp. Okay, it is sharp. But because the detent is so nice, it doesn't hurt. You don't like, and not saying it would hurt anyways, but it's, I wouldn't call this a strong detent. I would almost call this a perfect detent because when you're pushing it, it's like the second you put, you know, pressure on it, it just flies and you have a very soft landing pad everything and it doesn't even have a landing pad cut out really but it's very soft when you land on it and it's like 
the pressure between the pressure, the jimping, the detent, and the shape, the roundness of this flipper tab was so thought out that it's about it's as perfect as you can get. You can light switch it. Listen to that sound. Whoa, what a sound. You can push button it. Both are very satisfying, but the detent is just so perfect. It's insane. Listen to the sounds from this thing. Now, when you unlock it, the detent ball is so early, you almost never hit it. It's almost like it doesn't have the reverse detent ball. It's right there. I mean, it's like literally right when you unlock it. It's right there. And then, when so when you unlock it, it's already past it. No matter where you put your thumb, it's going to be past it. It's almost like you never feel it, aside from when you open it. When you open it, it's in the detent position, but after you unlock it, you almost never run into it. it. It was almost, it was weird to find. I was trying to figure it out. Like, where is this thing? But it's literally, it's right there, right when you lock, when, right when it locks up. It's like, right there, that's it. So, it's so early, I should say. Which is a good thing, because then when you unlock it, you never have to worry about touching it. You literally never run into that detent ball. And then when you unlock it, the lock bar is the lock bar cutout isn't very big, but it's very easy to unlock. It is a titanium liner with no um, steel insert, which doesn't matter because there's absolutely zero, zero lock stick whatsoever. It is effortless, effortlessly unlocked when you unlock it. Like the the, um, the lock bar is very easy to push over, or the liner, I should say. The, um, the lock bar liner is very easy to disengage. And then the smoothness from here, when you unlock it, from here to, to, to closed, it's like it's on glass, like wet oiled glass. It's very, very smooth. It almost like drops from here to here. Like it's like when you when you unlock it from here to here, you feel like like it's on wet glass. But then from here to here, it's like it's just air. There's nothing stopping it from just dropping into place, which is a real luxurious feeling. Like it's um it's definitely unique, and I enjoy it a lot. It's perfectly centered, and everything is just so tightly fit and put together. You can feel the jimping on the back spacer, or should I say the liners, because the back spacer is carbon fiber. But this titanium liner, uh, ch chitoyant carbon fiber, damn steel bolstered, M390 bladed knife is amazing. But there's always some bad things, so let's get into it very quickly. I know this video is becoming very long. So... One thing I do not like is that they use T5s everywhere. Not T6s, not T8s. T5, which is very, very tiny. I don't know if that's a common thing with South African knife makers or not, but it's a little too tiny than what I like because you can strip them out very easily and then trying to send it back or get work done, you got to send it all the way back to South Africa. So um, that's one thing. The other thing is this is on IKBS, which IKBS is the loose balls. I have seen some that say IKBS and then they weren't loose balls. So I don't know. But from what I know that they're supposed to be the ones where it has a, a washer with the, the ceramic balls inside the washer. But when you take it apart, all the balls come out. You got all the ceramic balls and you got to find them all and you got to put them all back in. And it becomes a cat and mouse game, I guess you could say. Or it, it just it makes it a little more tougher to take it apart and clean it. But I have to imagine that you're not going to take this apart very often. But when you do, you are going to run into that problem. But other than that, that's the only two things I could really find that I didn't like about the knife. It is so perfect and so good in so many ways that... For a custom knife, this is amazing. And also, I got to say that the prices range anywhere from $550, $600, all the way up to 
1250 1500 so there's a definitely a big range so this knife you know i think i think it's around 750 800 dollars but that to me is a very good price for what you're getting i have to say that again a very good price for what you're getting and the reason why i'm saying that is because these materials are so unique not too often you see damascus steel bolsters or even this kind of carbon fiber and a lot of his knives are very unique the attention to detail the the flipping action the sound is so unique it's not like other knives and that's what you're paying for when you get um you know a knife like this and i, I really like that and to think that i'm gonna spend seven hundred dollars if i'm looking for a knife that is very unique and is custom to me. This is definitely a good place to go. Also, you know, there's there's a lot of knives out there in that price range, so it's hard to justify that type of money when you can get a lot of a lot of tool-like knives like Striders and Medfords and stuff like that versus like an art piece like this. But that is definitely a good performer. This is definitely the Ergos are very nice on this thing. You have any place you want to put your hand, you can. I mean, you can. This thing is definitely a perform. I don't want to say performance based, but it's definitely a great using blade shape and Ergos. Because if you look, it tapers down to from bigger to small, which is just like your hand. Your hand does that too. So it feels really good in the hand. And you barely feel the clip. The clip works very nice in and out of the pocket. So there's a lot of great things here. And then the blade shape is a blade shape for, for use. I mean, you can slice, you can push cut, you can get to the tip very easily. Just a well-made, um, or should I say, well, the, damn it, <laughs> losing words here. It's just a well-shaped blade for for use but yeah there's my review guys the good and the bad it wasn't very much bad it's hard to find bad things on a knife like this but it's definitely easy for me to say the t5s are bad and the ikbs if they are loose bearings in there or loose um, balls in there because i did not take it apart so i'm just guessing that it's loose balls and if it's not then i can't then i got to take that back and i'm going to say why'd you put that big old ikbs on there but the reason why they do it is so that you know when you take it apart that they are loose. Love you guys. Peace.